Across the mighty Hindu Kush mountains, the legend of Alexander the Great still resonates. The Macedonian general who conquered the ancient world from Greece to India. His legacy and Hellenic culture that endured for centuries. Today, in the Pakistan frontier town of Peshawar, a journey to the bazaar reveals alluring fragments of that lost world. Behind the usual bric-a-brac of the stores is a thriving black market of drugs, this guns, Menander? and plundered this antiquities. Menander. Menander. Yes. This is Menander used. So how much for this coin? This is uh, 10,000 rupees. 10,000 rupees, yeah. What's that in uh, US dollars? It's about uh, 180. The dealers, knowing an amateur when they see one, 10, offer up ancient Greek coins 10, 000, of dubious yeah. origin. It's it's a real thing? Yeah. It's not a copy? Not a copy. It's real. It will be easy to prove whether this coin is fake or real. But far more difficult to establish is a claim from a small community in a remote corner of Pakistan that they are the direct descendants of Alexander's armies. A living link stretching back more than 2,300 years to the world of ancient Greece. Their isolated world is still a treacherous two-day jeep ride over the Hindu Kush. Beyond lies the home of the Kalash Kafirs. Translated literally, they are the Black Infidels. The Kalash are welcoming the spring with the Joshi Festival. They're animists, nature worshippers, and their refusal to convert to Islam has seen them marginalised over the centuries. Numbering fewer than 4,000, the Kalash now occupy just three remote valleys along the rugged northern border with Afghanistan. The exact origins of their ancient culture are shrouded in mystery, but Kalash schoolteacher Anis Umar believes he knows the answer. I think that these people are uh, descendants of the Alexander the Great because uh, I found a similarity in Greece. The ancient uh, Greek culture was uh, similar to uh, Kalash people. About the only way to spot a Kalash man is by the distinctive peacock feather in his cap. But the women still proudly insist on wearing their traditional black outfits every day of the year. In the museums of Greece, Anise claims to have found many striking parallels in language, architecture and dress. Uh, the dresses, the women dress, there are many uh, museums. So I found there like these uh, dresses. The elderly shaman recounts the stories of Kalash ancestors. This is a purely oral culture. There's no written history. They believe in an ancient spiritual home called Siam, interpreted by many historians as being the base of one of Alexander's generals in what is now modern-day Syria. The Greek connection, it appears, is largely a matter of faith. Outside it will be only stones and uh, timber, nothing. And one outsider who passionately believes in the preservation of Kalash culture is Athanasius Loronis from an Athens-based group, Greek Volunteers. He's building a cultural centre, partly funded by the Greek government. At first glance, this all appears very, very Greek to me. 
the designs. Yes, uh, the design of the Kalasak uh, houses are similar to the Greek designs. And the columns? And the capitals of the columns uh, are Ionic style, but also it's Kalasa style. When finished, the centre will dominate the Kalash village of Bumbaret. A school, museum and medical clinic all rolled into one. Prominently displayed is the star of Vigina, Alexander the Great's family crest, a controversial symbol 